Southern Mississippi's Golden Eagles are on the road at UAB and Middle Tennessee. We'll take a look at the highlights and we'll also meet up close and personal Golden Eagles senior D'Angelo Richardson. That and a whole lot more today on Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Doc Sadler. Well, hi everybody. Welcome to Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Doc Sadler presented by Bank Corp South. Golden Eagles have just returned from a two-game road trip in Conference USA. A trip last Thursday night over to Birmingham to take on the Blazers of UAB. A Saturday afternoon ball game in Murfreesboro, Tennessee against the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee. And Doc, we'll talk uh, about UAB in just a minute, but just uh, at this point, give us sort of your take on where you see the Golden Eagles are, where they are at this point in the season. We know in all honesty, uh, after six games, it's probably about where I thought we'd be. I knew going to Marshall and going to Western Kentucky was going to be awfully difficult. Uh, if you're going to compete and, and, and show improvement and at the end of the year have a chance to, to, to be in a good place in the standings and you've got to win your home games, uh, the two that we've had were there. Uh, and then also going to UAB and uh, Middle Tennessee. Uh, you know, those four, four trips are probably the toughest trips that we have. And uh, in all four games that we played on the road, I thought we really did some good things. Even the two games this, uh, this weekend, um, against UAB and Middle Tennessee, I thought at times uh, we did play well. Uh, neither game did we get off to a good start. You know, that's a negative, but the positive of that is uh, in both of those games, we just kept plugging away and kept competing. And at halftime, we were, uh, we were back in each one of those. And then in the UAB game on Saturday, um, you know, we were in a situation where uh, late in the game, if we just hit a couple of shots, uh, then, then we would, uh, you know, we would have been right there. Uh, Middle Tennessee, again, same thing. We missed some layups that was uncontested. So overall, in the six ball games that we've played, uh, you know, Thursday nights are, are right now a, a night that we seem to be playing a little bit better. But the good news is, in this last weekend, I was able to get uh, Ladavius drain some minutes, and so now I, uh, I can trust him. Uh, he had had a. Uh, some really good practices over Christmas, you know, D'Angelo, and then I got, uh, you know, Penny uh, extended minutes. So overall, now I've got three more guys that I can play and I can trust to put in the ball game at different times. It's going to give us something. So in that aspect, I think we're a little bit ahead. Obviously, uh, I, nothing's changed as far as home games and road games. Uh, but to make a next step, you got to win some road games, and we haven't done that yet. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, in four, four, four chances, uh, but we've still got uh, five more chances to do that, and, and I think we'll get some road wins this year. One of the challenges against UAB, they've got uh, two of the better big men in the league and Chris Coakley and William Lee, and the Eagles obviously are not, uh, you don't have a lot of guys that can match up with that, but so that was one of the challenges in that UAB ball game. Well, again, you know, they're a team that uh, has – uh, some seniors that have been through a lot and have had success, and and they are. That's an that's an area that we have, you know, put on the floor. Not near as big as some of the other people, but uh, you know, for for the most part, except one game at Marshall, we have been right there up until the UAB game, and even the UAB game, uh, it wasn't uh, you know it wasn't like they uh, just dominated us inside. Our guys competed hard and we trapped the post decent. And uh, so, uh, you know, yeah, we are small uh, and, and it's probably a little bit more difficult against UAB, like you mentioned, and even the Middle Tennessee game that, you know, that is the strength of their basketball team. And, uh, you know, we took the punch. And, and, and to be honest with you, I thought uh, against UAB, uh, we were right there with them, and uh, that wasn't a big big problem for but it, us. But it works the other way, too. I mean, when you've got that smaller lineup and maybe the opponent's a little bigger, it's harder for them sometimes to keep up with the speed and quickness of your smaller lineup. Well, again, you got to make shots, and we made shots against UAB, and that's what allowed us, uh, you know, to, to stay in the ball game. Uh, coach Bennett, that used to coach forever, uh, Tony Bennett's dad, who's at Virginia now, he always felt like, you know, Put a team on the floor that other people have difficult guarding you. As a coach, you've got to try to figure out ways to defend them. And you can defend the post different ways if you're smaller. And so I think the coaching part of it becomes into play more on that end, on the defensive end, than it does the offensive end. If you're going to play 
uh, the unusual mismatch uh, team that we have. You mentioned uh, Ladavius Drain, uh, his first really extended playing time. He had 19 points against UAB, the freshman out of Calhoun City. But he also hit the backboards, got in there and got some rebounds. So uh, a young man who obviously got a great future here at Southern Miss. Well, again, I, I thought uh, Drain had a great uh, fall. I mean, and when we went to Bahamas was probably as good offensive players we had. And then once we started putting in a lot of things, I think, uh, you know, uh, his confidence may have dropped a little bit. Uh, he has the most unbelievable high school coach and Coach Coffey at Calhoun City. He's the most positive person, but at the same time, most real person. And he tells it like it is. And he also has a mother that is uh, an unbelievable lady that tells it like it is. And they both supported, uh, very supportive, was driving down on weekends when he wasn't playing and, and, and basically put it back on him. And he went home for a couple of days at Christmas, came back, and from really December the 26th uh, until this past weekend has, has probably had as good of practices as he's had all year. And he was given the opportunity to play on Thursday night and uh, stepped up and did a great job. As you mentioned, I think he finished with nine rebounds also. And then, uh, you know, he's only going to get better. He, unbelievable person and kid. And, uh, you know, you, you're really happy that, that uh, you know, he stuck with it, the tough times, and now been given the opportunity to play. And now he's fixing to have a, an unbelievable three and a half years of college basketball. Well, it was Southern Miss and the Blazers of UAB last Thursday night in the Bartow Arena in Birmingham. Let's go back and take a look at the highlights. Blazers open up man to man. Eagles to Griffin. Griff drives inside. Got an easy layup. Nobody picked him up. Coming off that pick and Griff lays it in. Rowe throws it back out front to Griffin. He fakes the three. Drive pull up jumper. 18 footer good again. Tyree Griffin's hit his first two shots of the ball game. Here's Richardson into the corner. Holland bounces it down to Griffin in trouble. Now out to Richardson for a three straight away. Good. Bingo. That time and that extra pass got him an open shot top of the circle wants a pick now going to drive down the lane kicks it into the corner Holland with a three bingo Kevin Holland knocks down a three that's what the Eagles need Edwards out front Holland now to Richardson left corner jumper by Griffin a three bingo with a man hanging on him Tyree Griffin knocked it down Griffin faking Griffin going to drive the lane scoop it up in the rim and in he went right through traffic and got a layup that's nine for Griffin into the corner right side to Edwards Back to Griffin, he shoots the jumper right side. Good, bingo, a three, and Griff is red hot. Griffin with a dozen. And here's Drain out of the left corner, bingo. The freshman hit a three. Well, Davies Drain not afraid to do that. Here come the Eagles. Eagles to Drain, Drain gonna drive left side, down inside, scoops it up and in. And Drain going to work and timeout Robert Eason. Griffin in the front court, comes off a pick, back to Rowe, 15 footer out front, good by Tim. Now that time, Rowe took his time. Kevin Holland front court. Holland into Conley. Conley off to Drain, and Drain lays it in. So Conley gets the assist. Drain gets the layup. Griff over to Holland. Kevin's open. Three right side. Bingo. Good ball movement that time. Holland gets his second three. Holland bounces it over to Drain. He's going to drive the baseline, shoot a floater, and hit it along the right baseline. So Drain's got a career high nine for the Golden Eagles. Griffin wants a pick, gonna get it from Conley. Comes up top, gonna shoot a three straight away. Bingo. Tyree Griffin has got 17. Griffin to Drain left corner. Drain feeds Edwards for the short bank shot. Good. 10 footer along the left side of the lane. Just the second bucket for Edwards. Kevin Holland out front, top of the bubble. The Drain. There's a three by Drain. Bingo. Ladavius hits his second three. Richardson driving off to Holland, a three ball, right side by Kevin Bingo. Kevin Holland's got three threes and nine points. Rowe picked up the loose ball. Holland a three, Bingo off the right wing. Crowd was roaring about that block. Holland got the loose ball and knocked down his fourth three. He's going to fake and drive, and the ball knocked loose, but picked up by Griffin. A three out front by Tyree Bingo. Griffin with his career high fourth three. Back to Griffin, a three out of the left corner, bingo. Five threes for Griffin. Richardson out front, fires it inside, wide open drain for a layup. Good look by Richardson. Eagles get a steal, Edwards steals it, 
Out front, Holland. Three ball, Kevin. Bingo! Timeout, UAB. Griffin out front, Richardson to drain a three ball right side. Bingo! Big night for Ladavius. Out front, Edwards. He'll shoot it. Three on the way. Short, no good. Got his own rebound and got a layup. Eight point game, 83 75. So the clock ticking down, the final seconds expire, and the Blazers win it. 86 75 over the Golden Eagles. Well, that was a look at the Golden Eagles over at UAB on the Thursday night. They made the road to trip up to Murfreesboro, Tennessee for a Saturday afternoon ball game against Middle Tennessee. And Doc uh, Kermit Davis and that ball club, I mean, no question about it, they've been the team to beat. They've been the best team the last couple of years in Conference USA. Well, no question. You know, how, how quick things can change. You know, it was just, what, four years ago that everyone thought Kermit was in his last year of coaching. and wasn't going to be able to hang in there and then, uh, you know, unbelievable coach, does an unbelievable job and, you know, got a couple of big wins and then, and, and then he had a run of some good players and, uh, again, that's the case again this year and uh, they are. And probably what separates them a little bit is those top two or three teams, not only uh, are they good basketball teams, but he's got the best defensive team of those guys and, you know, when you add that into play, uh, you know, then it makes for a very difficult uh, team to play against. And, and playing on the road, uh, I can remember the first year going in there, I was surprised that the lack of attendance, uh, and now they, they're getting good crowds. And any, I don't care, even in our game, uh, you know, when we made our little run, uh, the crowd gets involved and it just, it just, it gives you, it gives you help. And, uh, and, and, and so Kermit's done a phenomenal job. He's got a good team again this year. And, and like you said, he's going to be one of the two or three best teams in this league. He got off to uh, not a very good uh, start shooting the basketball, dug yourself a little bit of a hole, but then battled back and were within six at halftime. Well, again, just like the uh, game that we had played on Thursday night, we, it wasn't that the guys were taking tough or bad shots. We just wasn't making shots. And unfortunately for that ball game, um, you know, we just never got going. And I think a lot of it, again, was the tough game that we had had again on Thursday night, uh, you know, because this team usually shoots the ball pretty good. And we ended up three for 18 at the three-point line, which for us, uh, playing the, the, the way we want to play, it's just difficult. And I mentioned earlier that we had uh, three opportunities when the ball game was a 10, 12-point ball game that we missed three straight uncontested layups. And that has to be fatigue uh, because the guys that were missing them are, are guys that don't miss them. And next thing you know, uh, after that, they go hit a couple of threes and uh, then the game's pretty much over. And you've talked about that too. I mean, you, you, you want to keep your best players on the court, but at the same time, you can't have them playing 39, 40 minutes. You got to find a way to get them a, a little bit of a rest during the ball game. Well, it's not just the 38, 39 minutes that they're playing, John. It's uh, those minutes and where they're playing at. I mean, Kevin and Cortez are basically guarding uh, the other team's best player and the other team's best 6'7", six, 6'8", six, player. And physically, as competitive as they are, the thing that really concerns me is, is us getting beat down. And, uh, you know, and I think on uh, Thursday night, we just competed and competed and, and, and really competed on the boards. And it came to Saturday night against Middle. We did not shoot it good. And not, and not only that, it was the worst, uh, worst night we had had on the defensive boards where they outscored us 24 to two on second chance opportunities. So those two areas, uh, those two areas is definitely uh, a sign of just being fatigued and tired. And on top of that, you throw in a, a tough trip uh, just getting there and uh, so it was a tough weekend it's one that's behind us and uh, you know looking forward to moving on well it was the golden eagles and the blue raiders of middle tennessee up at the murphy center in a chilly murfreesboro tennessee on saturday afternoon let's go back and take a look at the highlight drain's going to drive to the bucket get down inside bank it up and in with the right hand I tell you what, the freshman getting better and better every time he steps out there. Here's Kevin Holland driving out front. Gives it to Hampton. Hampton going to drive down inside. Left-handed shot up on the rim and in. 
Good drive by Hampton. Griffin out front gets a pick from Rowe. Driving, pull up jumper off the left wing. Got it. Bingo. That's a three. Griffin's going to go right with it. Now back to Drain. Open for a three on the way. Bingo. Ladavius Drain's hit three threes. Well, so the Golden Eagles wrap up a, a week on the road in Conference USA, and now they'll begin to get ready for a couple of home games. But before we do that, and we'll talk about what's coming up for the Golden Eagles, let's talk, Doc, about our feature this week. It's on the lone senior on the ball club, D'Angelo Richardson, young man out of Vicksburg, Mississippi, played uh, junior college ball at Holmes Community College. And, well, what a, what a great job he's done. He's not the biggest guy out on the court, but he plays hard and makes a lot of things happen. D'Angelo is going to be one of the most favorite uh, players that I've ever coached. Uh, he's a kid that came here, Coach Flanagan at Holmes brought him down and you know he was just a humble young man at that time just wanting to play college basketball division one and you know he's not on scholarship, he's paying his own way. Um, he has been the total team player. You know last year uh, when we were struggling obviously he hit some big shots. Uh, you know, and uh, made a couple of free throws in, a, in, in an exhibition game that uh, helped us win and he hit a shot against Florida International. The thing that D'Angelo uh, is, he's just a solid person. And, you know, as you coach, you get a chance to coach a lot of different people. And the thing that I know uh, with D'Angelo, uh, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, he's gonna be a very successful person. He's gonna have a great family. And uh, it's just been my treat uh, to, to coach him because you don't get a chance to coach kids these days that really understand the total picture. And he gets the picture. He's actually painting the picture. And that, that, that's fun. And he's a guy, if you leave practice, uh, he's a lot of times the last guy to leave the floor. He's out there shooting and practicing, trying to get better. And he takes that same work ethic in the classroom where he's a great student. Well, he's been an honor roll student ever since he's been here. And, and uh, you know, he is, again, a, a guy that came to our program that uh, we have benefited greatly because of him. And uh, I, can't, uh, I can't wait to see what he's doing 10 and 15 years from now because I know it's going to be something pretty special. Well, he's a fun guy to be around and a hard worker both on the court and off the court for the Golden Eagles. Let's spend a few moments and visit and meet up close and personal D'Angelo Richardson. When I came on my visit, it felt, it, felt, it felt like home. And you know, I'm from Mississippi too, so it was like the perfect, perfect situation for me coming back home, trying to build a legacy here like I did in JUCO. So that was, that was the whole reason. I expected to uh, come in and play right away because uh, I put in the work and I just, when I, when I came here on my visit, I felt like I could help the team out and I felt like I could play a lot. So when I came in and I played a lot, it just, it just built up to my expectations. Uh, so things I worked on coming into uh, Southern Miss, I was trying to work on my being better at floor vision because I was mostly a two guard scorer in high school and mostly junior college. So I tried to work on my floor vision, my ball handling, change of pace, shooting off the dribble, things like that. Uh, before I got here, uh, my junior college coach, he was real defensive minded. But JUCO and senior college is still different because here you have to kind of, everybody can play, so you have to pay attention to details and scouting reports because if you miss even a little thing, that might be a game winning bucket that you just gave up. So when I got here, it was more of paying attention to the defensive principles. I take advantage of my height by trying to get under taller players because most taller players, they're not really comfortable with it shorter people under them all the time, getting into them, running around, chasing them. And I don't really get tired, so I can just chase people all day and just nag them and get after them on defense and then use my speed on offense just to weigh them down. Uh, the other sports I was in prior to basketball, I played a little baseball and I played a little football. But basketball was always the one sport that I always wanted to play. Even though I wasn't that good at it at first, because I never played YMCA ball or anything like that, so I just had to learn, learn on my own. I, I kind of figured it out once I got to about eighth grade that I was kind of good at it. 
I could shoot, but I couldn't do nothing else. So I started watching YouTube videos to like work on my game and I just excelled over everything else. So after ninth grade, I stopped playing football and I just, just stayed strictly basketball. Yeah, coming into ninth grade, uh, my, high, my uh, ninth grade coach had a lot of confidence in me, but I didn't have that much confidence because I had never played before. So it was just like, he just always was on me. He was like, you're really good. You just have to, you know, get out your shell. And the more confident I got, the better I got. So he just helped me to, to bring out what was already in me that I didn't even know about. I was always in the gym, high school, junior high, junior college, all the way up to here. I just always was always in the gym. I'd come two hours early before high school practice and just be shooting and be wired by practice time. But I used to just do it all the time just because I just liked being in the gym and just like seeing shots go in and just feeling like, you know, I knew what I was doing and felt good. Trying to be a leader, I try to look at it as more as a leading by example and being a vocal leader because I've always been the type to lead by example by, you know, like just just watch how I pick up my man and just feed off my energy. But and when I got here, I had to become more of a vocal leader because uh, just because most people don't really, they might not understand it, and just by me showing them, they probably still don't get what I'm doing. So I have to actually say it and then show them, and then more people pick up that way. Right now I'm studying criminal justice at Southern Miss, but after basketball is all said and done, I want to come back and study engineering. I want to do computer engineering since that's like a big field and it's like where a lot of money is going to right now. And I feel like I would like doing that just because it's a part of learning the structure of things and learning how to pick apart and put back together things. Well, again, a great visit there with the Golden Eagles senior, the lone senior, D'Angelo Richardson. And uh, D'Angelo and the rest of the Golden Eagles now turn their attention to a couple of home games in the Conference USA. Uh, they'll meet Rice on Thursday, North Texas on Saturday at Reed Green Coliseum. And, Doc, let's talk first about Rice. That's a little different ball club than we saw a year ago. Their coach left. Three of their best players, I think, uh, left and transferred to other places. But uh, it's a Rice ball club. If you watch the scores, and like you knew, they're getting better and better, even though they've got a lot of new guys on the ball club. You know, John, it's going to be a difficult game because of the style that they play. And as you mentioned, I think probably before Christmas, they were trying to find, uh, find each other, get used to playing with each other. And every game from this, you know, even though they have uh, – struggled to get wins in the league. Every game that they've played, they've played better and better and better and uh, played within six or seven uh, this past weekend against uh, North Texas, who we play Saturday. Um, they play a different style. They're going to play, you know, 40 minutes of zone, a matchup type zone that uh, we've not played against. Uh, so that's going to be different. The thing that we're going to obviously have to do is, is shoot the ball very, very well. And uh, again, it's a, a home game. And, and, and the thing that, uh, you know, uh, we've done so far since we've, we've played the few games that we have is we have shot the ball good at home. So hopefully that will carry over Thursday night when we play Rice. And then uh, North Texas, they're under new leadership there. They've got a new uh, coach, but uh, they've had some impressive wins so far this year. They really have. Uh, Grant uh, McCaslin, uh, who I've known for a long time and uh, went to Texas Tech and and uh, you know, coach for a friend of mine, Coach Dickey, and and then has been unbelievably successful wherever he's been. And then one of our old former friends uh, is on his staff, Dream Dowling, and uh, they've done a tremendous job. Uh, Tony Benford has left them a lot of good players. They were underclassmen, uh, and now Grant Nims taking those players from a you know from a young team to an older team, and therefore. You know, they went on the road the first two weekends, uh, for the first weekend, and got two road wins. Uh, they went to UTEP and San Antonio, so, um, and then they won uh, on the road again at Rice. So, uh, it's going to be a difficult ball game for us. Uh, one that, uh, you know, uh, coming back again after a Thursday night ball game, got to find a way to, to, to get both of these, and uh, it's not going to be easy, but hopefully our guys will be up for the challenge. It's a tough time of year, isn't it, for, for any team? I mean, you want, you, you want to get in the gym and work on things to get better, 
but at the same time, you got two games during the week. Sometimes you got two days of travel during the week, so just not a lot of time to get in there and uh, work on some of the little things you probably need to. There's no question about it, uh, and and not not having a full team. Uh, you know, the thing about being at other places when you have a full team, in practice you can get guys on the bench ready to play, and you can rest your guys. Uh, just make sure they know what they're doing because as many as many minutes as our our players are playing. The games, are, uh, the games are going to keep them in shape, so you don't have to worry about them uh, in, in the conditioning category. So all you want to do is try to keep them as fresh as you can keep them. And, and right now, you know, we're not quite halfway through the conference season, but uh, again, uh, Saturday at uh, Middle Tennessee, I thought the guys got tired, so we're going to have to manage it this week to make sure we don't wear them out. All right, Doc, thanks for the weekly visit, and uh, we'll see you next week. John, appreciate you. Thanks. All right, the Golden Eagles Thursday night at home at Reed Green against the Rice Owls, and then Saturday afternoon the Mean Green of North Texas are in town. Don't forget, Monday night we're at Georgia Blue for the Golden Eagle Hotline. Come on by, visit with us, enjoy a great meal, and sit around and we'll talk a little Golden Eagle basketball. Have a great week, everybody. See you at Reed Green Coliseum, and we'll see you back here next time with another inside look into Golden Eagle basketball. You come here for been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right, thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. Hey Southern Miss fans, it's Toby Barker, mayor of Hattiesburg. Mickey Spagnola once wrote, if you're going to war and you get to choose first, choose Southern Mississippi. Always choose Southern Mississippi. Don't fight Southern Mississippi because no matter how hard you fight, those folks will fight harder. His words capture the character of our institution and our city. We here in Hattiesburg are writing a new story, one where we rise to our challenges with great excitement one where we push our city to reach its potential, and most importantly, one where there's real partnership between the University of Southern Mississippi and the city of Hattiesburg. Southern Miss is vital to our city's success, from the quality of life it provides through athletics and the arts to the talent it cultivates in the classroom. We share a common destiny. Hattiesburg is proud to be Mississippi's college city, and we hope as we go forward, you'll join us in supporting our Golden Eagles this season as they go to the top.